Ever since I was a young kid, I've had a big interest in numbers and mathematics. I loved browsing through phone books, sports leaderboards, and weather forecasts because they had a lot of numbers to read into. When I was four years old, I asked my mother to stop singing for me before I went to sleep and instead test me with simple math questions. What is 11 plus 4, 20 minus 12, 3 times 5? And this helped me relax. Now, my mother always remembers this period, and not because of my interest in numbers, but because she really loves to sing. And this was sort of a bummer for her. Now, this math interest of mine continued more or less from primary school through high school. At 19 years old, I decided that high school wasn't the end of my academic road and that college would be my next step. Based on my background, it felt natural to go for a degree in mathematics. I remember seeing on my first day a course called Introduction to Computer Science as part of my first semester. I thought to myself, isn't this a bit weird? Why would they teach this as a mandatory course in the first year at the mathematics department? I would soon find out that there was a strong logical explanation to it. The reason I'm sharing this with you is not to brag about being good with numbers from an early age. No. It's because looking back, I'm profoundly disappointed that I didn't get introduced to computer science earlier in my life. You see, computer science is the scientific and practical approach to computation and its applications. The practical side of computing can be seen everywhere as software impacts our lives in so many ways. In fact, a majority of the population in today's world is either a computer user or consumer. However, most people do not understand how to get computers to do new and original things. And think about it like this. Just as we use languages to communicate with each other or instruments to play music, we code programs to express ourselves to computers. Coding is a tool that challenges our creativity and enables us to invent new things. With the presence of the internet, we're able to share these creations with millions and millions of people around the world. And it's both so beautiful and powerful. Now, with technology, we are advancing humanity by helping people live their lives in a better way. And computer science plays a vital role in driving technology forward. And when I learned all of this during my college days, a whole new world opened for me and most of my colleagues as well that were going through the same realization. My belief is that coding is a key part in the 21st century literacy and that we need to introduce kids to computer science early in their lives. In fact, I think it's unfair to kids. It's unfair if we don't give them the opportunity to learn computer science from an early age. And here's why. According to an Oxford study from 2013, 47% of jobs in the U.S. will be automated within the next 20 years. A majority of the jobs created instead will require computer engineering skills. And we're already seeing a huge need today with over 500,000 open computing jobs in the U.S. alone, according to Code.org. But this is not just about some jobs or foreseeable economic changes. This is about understanding how the world around us works. A recent study on internet usage asked people if they had used internet or Facebook in the last 30 days. 11% of the people that said they had used Facebook in that time also said that they hadn't used the internet at all during that same period. <laughs> we are running the risk that the next generation 
doesn't have a clue about how all of this works. We understand how nature works. We understand how societies work. But we do not understand the basics of computers and how to make them do original things. Yet they are everywhere, and we practically do everything with them. The thing is, we tend to focus a lot on very short time horizons. What's the next cool gadget? What features will the next iPhone have? But let's go on a journey and look back 50 years. In 1965, MIT was one of the few institutions that had a powerful mainframe computer. It almost took half a building and was shared by thousands of students. Today, the mobile phones in your pocket are more than a thousand times more powerful than that mainframe computer. That's a staggering improvement over a historically short period of time. It turns out it's a billion-fold improvement in price for performance. And there are many indicators that the exponential growth in computing and uh, information technology will continue going forward. As Bill Gates puts it, we always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years and underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10. Now, I won't go into too dramatic futuristic projections, but kids that are born today shouldn't get too excited when they grow up about getting a driver's license. They simply won't need one. <laughs> Technology makes learning computer science more accessible, more interactive, and more engaging. But let's not mistake the rapid adoption of new technology around us as the sole solution for computer science education. Buying iPads won't magically turn us into coders single-handedly. We have to do something about it ourselves. It starts with us. One way to take action is that we talk to the people who are responsible for our educational system our schools, our teachers, the people we elect. Talk to these people. Ask them what they are doing to address computer science. Another way is that you, as parents, introduce your kids to computer science by playing coding games, reading books, having discussions about how all of this works. There are a lot of resources available online today for how to get started. But then we also need innovators and entrepreneurs to create new tools and new applications that make the introduction even simpler. And that's exactly what I'm doing. In the past two years, my co-founders at Radiant Games and I have worked hard at trying to create the best playful coding experiences possible. We believe equality should start early, and therefore our mission is to create gender-neutral and culturally friendly coding experiences. Our first experience that we have created is called Box Island. It introduces kids to the fundamentals of coding through an exciting journey. It's colorful and bright, it's engaging and inviting, but most importantly, the fun part of the game is the learning itself. Now, we have tested with a lot of kids in many countries. And our absolute favorite moment is when kids come up to us and say that their favorite thing and the best thing about Box Island was how challenging but fun it was. Those moments feel amazing to us because it means that Box Island motivates them to take the next step. It means that they are excited to take that next step and discover where their curiosity and creations lead them. Now, we're just about to launch Box Island worldwide on the App Store, and we can't wait to share it with families and schools across the globe. Now, earlier I said that it's unfair to kids if we don't give them an introduction to computer science early in their lives. You know what? It's not just unfair, it's unacceptable. 
Some kids love to draw. Some love playing music. Others are weirdly obsessed with numbers. <laughs> well, why don't we let the kids themselves decide if they love to create amazing things with code, just as with any fundamental subject? So we need to take responsibility. We need to say, this is not okay. My kid deserves an early introduction to computer science. Anything else is unacceptable. And I hope you join me in fighting for computer science for everyone.